Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is black and white cards with a pop of another color. My husband has a birthday this month and I thought the black and white color scheme would be perfect for his birthday card. I decided on a little punch of red so that I could put in some hearts. The pop-up die I'm using is our twist panel die set put into a side fold card. I started with a piece of black cardstock, 5 inches tall by 12 inches long and scored in the middle for folding. And then I just went stash diving to find a piece of pattern paper that was in the color scheme of black and white. I cut that to 4 and a half inches tall by 11 and a half inches long and then also scored it in the middle for folding. Okay, so from the twist panel die set, I want to use the base die to cut into the pattern paper. However, my pattern paper is very lightweight. So I just went and found an old Tyvek envelope and grabbed a piece of Tyvek that's about the size of the little X where the folds are going to be in that base. And I'm going to reinforce the back of my pattern paper with that Tyvek so that it can't tear. Since it's such a thin pattern paper, I was worried about just the opening and closing and opening and closing eventually kind of tearing those folds since it's so thin. But by adding that little bit of Tyvek behind it, it will reinforce where even if the paper were to tear, the Tyvek will not tear. Now, if you didn't have Tyvek, an old envelope sitting around, you could also maybe just use some packing tape. So just a way for you to reinforce the folds if you're using a thin pattern paper for the base of your twist panel. Okay, so to train the folds in the base of the twist panel, you back fold the card because then you'll be able to see the diagonal lines where they've been scored and you can work those in both directions. And then after you've worked the diagonal folds, you just open the card back up again and pinch those little arms to come into the card as the card closes. So this is just normal twist panel assembly. There is an assembly video on the die if you need more information about that. Now a little trick that I like to do with the twist panel is just to take my scissors and snip off the end of those triangles because then I can see down through that little hole I've made to really line it up right over the fold of the base card. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle and I'm just coating both halves of that inner pop-up card with adhesive but avoiding the arms because those still need to pop up into the card as the card opens and closes. Okay, then the die set also includes a die to cut the arms for the pop-up. I've cut that out of white cardstock. I'm just working the fold that's up the middle of both arms. And then those glue on to extend the arms out to be the right length to hold the panels. And once again, I clip off the end of those points since I clipped it off on the original card and that way I don't have to worry about those points kind of digging into the fold. So I've kind of sped up the footage on this because I know that a lot of you that own the twist panel, you probably already know how to put it together, but maybe you haven't pulled it out and used it in a while. And so I want to do a little refresher here. But if you need a slower paced assembly video, you can always go watch the original assembly video of the twist panel die set. And you always find assembly videos on our website, karenberniston.com, just going in and finding the item that you're looking for. The assembly video will be right on the product page. Okay, so once the arms are glued in, just kind of lined up next to those folds, maybe not bunched down into the folds, but just a little bit away from them. And then I can carefully close the card and get those arms trained to fold in with the card as well. And you may need to give that a little pinch that first time and make sure that they learn that fold. So that's just normal base assembly of the twist panel. Next, I cut the panel set twice and then four decorator rectangles with the panel sets, you use the tab, the little half tab that's in the center, to attach each panel set to the other one. So you can see that the tabs don't attach to each other, they attach to the other panel set, and then you'll end up with a row of four panels that you can fold accordion style, so valley, mountain, valley. Okay, and then I'm going to add those white decorator rectangles to each panel. Now I'm going to turn to some of our newer dies, like the Slim Frames set, which actually has the perfect size frames to fit on the twist panel. And I'm going to start with the oval frame and some black mirror cardstock. And before I cut it, I'm actually going to use my die cutting machine to emboss it so that I can get some of those raised little dots around that inner oval. 
Now, every die cutting machine has a sandwich that can be used to emboss a wafer thin die. You just need to go onto YouTube and check out what the sandwich is for your machine. I'm using a Spellbinders Platinum 6, so I'm just following the instructions that are right on the platform. I embossed first, and then I go through and die cut it with my normal die cutting sandwich. And then I'll have all those pretty little raised dots on the inside. So we like to think of our die sets like tools, timeless tools. And so new dies that come out are always backwards compatible to fit with the ones that came before. So the slim frames is no exception. You can see how well they fit on the twist panel die set. Our little animal and character die sets always fit perfectly on the pop-up. So I'm going to be using our gnome and Santa set. Now I cut all the pieces out of black and white since that's the color scheme for this one. And I use the stencil feature for the eyes and the mouth and I'm going to use the larger of the two noses that come in the set. And then I'm brushing a little bit of ink around the belt buckle and the nose and the fingers but otherwise just leaving everything in that kind of crisp black and white color scheme. And once again, if you need a slower assembly video, you can check out the assembly video for the Gnome and Santa set. You'll find that on our website. And then to give just a little bit more definition to the nose, I decided to double them up. So I just added a second one over the top. Now you have to be a little careful with things sticking up further than the panels with the twist panel because of course it has to twist and slide against the card to close. But these two locations are fine to have those hats sticking up higher than the panel. Okay, so now let's talk about amping this up a little more by using some of the platforms out of our new mini pops pop-up. So I can add a couple extra little pop-ups in this panel set because I basically have a valley fold. I have two valley folds and when I have a valley fold that can act like a little miniature card. So what I'm going to do with the spiral is I'm going to attach the center on one half of the card and I'm treating this little valley fold as a card inside my card. Then to attach the other half of the spiral, I add the adhesive on the outermost point and then close the card. And then that will attach the outer end of the spiral to the other half of the card. And you definitely wanna use a strong adhesive with the spiral. The end of mine ended up right over the top of that glossy black cardstock and I was a little bit worried about my glue setting up. So I decided just to throw a staple through the end and I'll just cover that with a little heart later. So that's just a way to add a little bit of extra pop-up fun to the twist panel. I can do the same thing with the little valley fold between the panels three and four. So the same exact procedure of attaching the center of the spiral on one half of the card and then getting the end attached to the other. Once again, I happen to be over the top of my black shiny cardstock, so I'll use a staple. So with this being a birthday theme, those spirals can just look like streamers. They don't necessarily have to have additional embellishments added to them, but I decided to add a little bit. I punched a hole in the spiral to add a metal jump ring that could hold the small tag die that's included in the twist panel set, and then I just added John's name using a label maker to both sides in case it spins around. Between the twist panel and the slim frames, there are heart dies, which was perfect for my punch color of red, so I've added those hearts around. And then I used our number set to cut John's age, 51. And I thought I was going to add that to the spiral, but the angle wasn't exactly perfect for viewing on that. So I had another idea, which was to use the smaller angled platform, also from the mini pops set, to attach in the fold in that lower card to be able to hold the age. So the way the little angled platforms work is that you coat the outer panel with adhesive and then you line up the end in the fold of a card and that can go anywhere along the fold. So I'm just choosing kind of in the outer section. Then I add adhesive to the top panel and then pinch the card closed. So it's going to attach those two panels into the fold of the card and create this little angled pop-up platform. And then to make the age pop a little bit more, I cut it out of both white and black and then just glued those pieces together to make a single piece that could be attached to that angled platform. So the bottom of the five just attached to the front face of that platform and now that pops up with the card. It does stick out, but that happens to be an area that isn't going to slide against the card. So I lucked out there. Okay, closing up the panel set, I just want to mark the center of the outer edge of the panels because that needs to be lined up with the fold of the arms in the finished card. 
So by just giving myself a little pencil line, it's just easy to make sure that that fold is right on my little pencil line. Okay, so the adhesive goes on the side of the panel arm that has the notch. So you find the notch and you start your adhesive at that notch and go over to the fold line, but you only stay to the one side of the fold line and then go all the way out to the end of the arm. And that could be a strong double-sided tape if you prefer. And then the goal here is to get the end of the arm lined up with the edge of the panel set so that the fold is right on that pencil line that you made at the center of the panel set. And then once that panel is attached, then I go out to the other arm and do the same thing, starting the adhesive at the notch and going out to the end and then making sure that the fold is right on the pencil line that's in the center of my panel set. Okay, so once my glue sets up, I'm ready to close this card. Now that first time, I want to make sure that my hands are very close to the fold of the card itself so that I am really twisting those panels so that they will close and find that closed position. The twist panel operates the best when the card itself has some weight to it. So if the card is nice and stiff, then it's going to twist that panel down every time. If your card is bendable, like you see mine here, then you know it works best when you fold from the center. However, once I add embellishments to the rest of my card, it will be fine. The Gnome and Santa set comes with a cute little present. So I've added one to the upper spiral and then I've added the other one below the age. Now, if you want your spiral to span a longer distance, you can glue two of them together. So I've cut two red spirals. I'm going to put one face down over the other one and attach just the outer portion of the spiral. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to give me one that's twice as long as the original so it can stretch further. Okay, so since I glued the outer ends together, both ends of this spiral are in the center. So I'm going to attach one end underneath the twist panel right there and then I need to find the closed position to attach the other center to the card itself by just closing the card against the exposed adhesive and then as it opens that spiral will extend. Once again my cardstock choice was giving me a little bit of trouble because it was a shiny red cardstock so instead of just depending on the glue I went ahead and put a little red mini brad through the outer end of each spiral. And then to cover the brad prongs, I just added a panel of white cardstock to the front and the back of the card. And that did two things. It covered the brad prongs, but it also really stiffened up the card. And so now the card is much more solid and operates that twist panel perfectly. To finish out the card's interior, I just added a few of the small hearts that come in the twist panel and then another one of those slim frames as a place to write a personal greeting. I like simple lead-ins for card fronts for pop-up cards, so I just kind of used the same elements and then created a very simple card front. And for my gnome on the front, I used the shiny black cardstock for his hat, and I liked that so well that I went ahead and cut two more, and I'm going to glue the shiny black hat over the matte black hat for the inside gnomes as well. My finished card is five by six, so it'll fit in an A7 envelope no problem. So definitely explore using the twist panel in a side fold card so then you end up with horizontal panels inside. It just kind of gives it a different look. This card translates beautifully into other color schemes. So if the black, white, and red, which was part of our challenge this month, isn't really your favorite color scheme, just try it in another color scheme. Here is the exact same card. The only thing I changed is instead of it being a birthday card, it just says happy, happy day. And I put the word high on the little tag that's hanging off the spiral. But other than that, I just followed the exact same formula. So I definitely invite you to look at these monthly videos as just techniques and blueprints and really make them your own. Check the description box below this YouTube video for a link to the blog post. That's where you will find more inspiration for this month's challenge theme by our very talented international design team. You will also find supply links. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.